What is going on, people? This is going to be a long video, so if you're not into long videos, do something while you're listening, or just click the X button don't watch. I really don't care. You know, I don't care. It's my fault. I don't care. I'm sorry. But I'm going to be talking about BG's video, Hard 8 Times video. I just saw Rev's video where they're talking about the crumb side, the suburban side, supporting YouTubers, not supporting YouTubers, likes, donations, you know, all that crap. So first off, BG, you're not exactly right, you're not exactly wrong, but judging by the channels that do get a whole ton of support and likes and donations and all that crap, it's all about how you engage your subs and a lot of these channels that get what you're looking for or wondering why you're not getting, number one, pander to their subs. They do. They pander to their subs. Like little kids, like little children, they act like they're their subscriber base, their best friend, their little brother. They, they act like somebody that you should look up to. Other channels get by doing it, like for example, Review Tech USA. He's a pretty much a one-stop shop. Any kind of news, any kind of gaming related articles, he's pretty much going to talk about it. You can subscribe to him and not subscribe to anybody else and you'll pretty much be in the loop of everything that is gaming related issues. Then you have the pro support refugee safe haven channels, you know, the fanboy channels, the pro insert platform channel, the pro refugee camp channels, the people that the other people with buyer's remorse like to go to to feel better about their purchase. Then you have people that have insider access, people that update content regularly that people like me and you can't upload. For example, Total Biscuit. He's just more inside the industry than we are. Then you have other people that are just overwhelmingly charismatic or people that have a unique gimmick. You get the idea. But there are some limitations. There is a glass ceiling for YouTubers, and that's just how it is. If you don't believe me, well, you're a victim of it, as you say, and I'm pretty sure other people are as well. People do not like YouTubers that literally started from the bottom and made it, and that's kind of what you are. People get jealous. The average Joe looks at your channel and says, BG can do it. I don't like him, but why can't I do it? So what do they do? They hate. Also, being real, being critical, being honest, something that you do, something that I also do, people don't like that. People don't want the truth. They want to be pandered to. They want to be coddled. They, they don't want to hear the harsh reality. I know some people do. I'm one of them, but by large in part, children, teenagers, young adults, they don't want to hear reality. They live life in denial, that's just how it is. And by not pandering, by not pampering, and by not spoiling them, well, it is what it is. Misconceptions. Um, a lot of people have been saying things like, the reason why BG isn't bigger or doesn't get likes or donations is because 1, 2, 3, ABC. I kinda disagree. Tons of big channels curse. Tons of big channels have tons of language. Look at the Hodge Twins, they say all kinds of vulgarity. There's a lot of people who are loud, also the Hodge Twins. There are a lot of people who are very confrontational. And there are a lot of people that are very controversial. Now, people also want to say and talk about the drama, and that big YouTubers don't start drama or get into drama. Go look at DJ Keemstar's YouTube, his Twitter. Go look at his whole purpose of his channel. Drama Alert Nation, which pretty much capitalizes off of drama of big streamers, big Twitch users, and big YouTube channels. Do not tell me that big channels do not cause drama, because you're a liar. So the conclusion on this little subject right here, at least the segment of this video, is that viewers are spoiled. They want to feel like a contributor. They want to feel like your friend. They want to feel like they're giving input into your channel. That what they say is mattering. That what they say you're listening to. That and the third. They want to feel like your friend. They want to feel like your friend, BG. They want to feel like they're close and part of you and all mushy and gooey and all that bullcrap. They also want to be acknowledged. They want to feel like they're part of something. 
like Rev said, Hodge Twin Army, we here represent... They want to feel like they're a part of something. And that's just the way it is. Now, myself in regards, um, hmm. Let's see. I get the whole, you know, I should be bigger, I should get more views, I should do this, I should do that. Quite honestly, people, I appreciate the views, I appreciate the platform, but I just don't care. I really don't. I don't pander. I'm highly critical of, hell, almost everything. I'll speak my mind regardless. I don't care who you are or give a damn what it is. I'm not afraid to offend people. In fact, I enjoy offending people. I proactively state that this is my channel, meaning I do not let viewers sway me or have any input to my channel or my content, meaning they don't feel connected or a part of something or a part of my channel. It's my channel. I dictate how it goes. I dictate everything about my channel. Suggestions, feedback, what I should do, what I should... No, I don't care. It's my channel. I do what I want to do. I am not concerned with my audience, nor concerned with how they feel. I'm sorry, it's just how I feel. I keep it 100. If I died today, none of you would come to my funeral tomorrow. If you died today, it's probably vice versa, so... We can be cool on YouTube, we can talk, and we can converse, and interact, and have fun, and be entertaining, but... I am just not emotionally invested into my subs, nor do I care how they feel. The channel is designed for me, in my entertainment, it is not designed for your entertainment. If you enjoy what I do, then that's cool. You can have fun with my fun, but primarily, my channel is for me. Another thing people don't like is that I challenge my viewers. You are not just going to come onto my channel and say dumb crap. I will challenge you. I will correct you. I will give you facts. I will cite things. I will reference things. If you come correct, you will be better educated afterwards, whether you want to believe it or accept it or not. It's just going to happen. I view YouTube as entertainment, while most view it as, let's be honest, something personal. A lot of you people take it personal. And I think Rev said it best, people always remember how you hurt them. And people are very sensitive. If they feel as if you hurt them, they will want to hurt you. That's just how it is. So in conclusion to this little segment, while I appreciate the subs and views like I said before, I look at my channel, at my channel, as a platform for me. As a platform that I earned, not that my audience or my viewers has given me. So I got a bunch of um, extra notes on this topic. Um, comments I read, random jots, things of that nature. People want content that makes them feel good. And I agree, you know. I'm not gonna lie, people work 9 to 5s or people go to class, high school, sports, college, whatever. People have crap in life, they come back home, they watch YouTube. Maybe they don't want to hear the harsh truth or 100 or honesty. It's like the Matrix, red pill or blue pill. Maybe they just want to listen and hear something that makes them feel better. Factual criticism is labeled as clickbait, and I 100% agree with that. There are some people that cannot accept or handle reality, and if they are given and shown reality, then they think that that is clickbait. How reality and the truth is clickbait is beyond me, but like I said, and like Rev said, you are dealing with sensitive people that get emotional. People just aren't educated enough to think for themselves. Agreed. This is why people latch on to people that pander to subscribers, that pander and pamper viewers, that treat them like children, that treat them like their friends over the internet. People can't think for themselves. L look at fanboys for Apple products, Droid, PlayStation, Nintendo, Microsoft, Xbox. People want to be a part of something because they are not educated or secure enough to think for themselves. There's a saying, um, fake it till you make it, and judging by the Xbox community on this website, a lot of people will fake it until they make it. That does not need to be elaborated on. People are insecure and can't have their values, beliefs, or opinions put into question. Oh my god, this is 100% true. 
when I say things and when I procure facts or throw out information that cited, source, reference it, backed, cannot be debated, cannot be disputed, people act like I just told them God isn't real. Because how dare you question their beliefs, their opinions, how dare you question their values. People don't like that. Again, big YouTubers don't start drama. Look at all the big YouTubers on Drama Alert Nation, DJ Keemstar. Moving on, the truth pisses people off. It does. How many times in life have you had that boy who's been dating that girl who you know has wronged her boy, but he's so blindly in love that he won't listen to you. He won't accept it. He can't believe it. He cannot come to terms with it. That's how a lot of people are on YouTube. They are that guy that has been wronged by that girl, but since they're so in love with that girl, they can't see two inches of their hand right in front of their face. Viewers are like women. Am I fat? No. Do I look good? Yes. See, viewers, your sub base, they are like women and you have to treat them like women. They want to be appeased, even if you're not telling them the truth. If they're fat, they want you to tell them they look skinny. If they're wearing something ugly, they want you to tell them that they look good. Your viewers, your subscribers, you can hate me for saying it, but they are like women and you need to treat them like a woman. Another thing people don't like. I do it a lot. Shoving the truth down people's throats. Sometimes you have to do it because people just can't get it. They refuse to get it no matter how many times you tell them one plus one equals two, they just won't accept it. So what happens is you have to keep saying it, keep doing it over and over and over. Repetition is the key. Hey, get in the classroom, you'll know it. Um, hmm, this is just me again. I prefer pure, brutal, destructive honesty. I don't care who I offend. I don't care who gets hurt. I don't care at all. All I care about is putting out the facts. And if you can't handle that, well then, I can't help you. You shouldn't be watching my channel. You need to unsubscribe, you need to go somewhere else. If you're critical, you're apparently crying. People don't like people when they're critical. People don't like people to call other people, companies, corporations, whatever out. They don't like it. And if you want to be critical, well, they're not going to like you. Wanting more positive and less negative. Essentially, they want that escape from the cold, harsh reality. I think I already went over that. Personality traits. Ego. Arrogance. Cockiness. Unfortunately, YouTube is not like a sport. You cannot go out there like Jordan, like Kobe, and just dominate. Impose your will upon others. See, a lot of people don't like ego, arrogance, or cocky attitudes, but in a competitive environment, in a sport, you can dominate the opposition, you can impose your will, and then nobody can say anything. Here on YouTube, you really can't do that, so if you are arrogant, cocky, a uh, little egotistical, even if you can back it, people really don't like it. People don't like people that are good. People don't like others that are well-versed. People don't like others that flex their superiority. The weak hate natural selection. It is what it is. Again, people want to feel like your friend. They want to be connected. They want to be close. And if you are acting like you're on another plane or a higher plane than them, then they can't relate and they don't feel good. To tell you the truth, don't be an ass about it. That's what a lot of people are saying. You can tell the truth, but don't be an ass about it. Now, I don't remember who wrote that on your video, but I will agree. I tell the truth a lot. A lot of times I am an ass about it. And I probably think that if I wasn't an ass about it, I probably wouldn't garner as much negative attention, hate, emotional grievances of men crying and bleeding all over the keyboard. Regardless, that is a fact. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. One plus one does equal two no matter how you say it, but tone and all that, yeah, we're not all tone deaf, you get the idea. Energy you put out is what you get back. 
while I don't agree with it because I think that people should have a spine and should be able to man up, it's true. If you're putting out... Oh, don't go to sleep on me, monitor. Don't go to sleep on me, monitor. Wake up. There you go. Wake up. If you're putting out negative vibes and critical vibes and things like that, people are going to reflect it right back at you. It's like Rev said. People will always remember how you hurt them. If you hurt them, they'll want to come back and hurt you. Again, people want to be treated like a princess. That goes into people like to be treated like a woman. You gotta treat yourselves like a woman. You gotta hold their hand, hold the door open for them, you know, pull their chair out for them, push their chair in, you know, tuck them in bed at night, pay for dinner. Yeah, you gotta do all that. Now again, people talk about being negative and critical. Angry Joe is very negative and very critical, and he does go after his moronic fans that are watching his videos, but I'm pretty sure he's still getting donations because he got that Wii, he's still getting tons of Twitch support, he's still getting tons of likes, you know, all that good stuff. People don't like the harsh truth, even if it's good for them. Matrix blue pill, Matrix red pill. Unfortunately, we live in a world and a society where people would rather be ignorant and live in a dream world than live in reality. Um, when people say unsub, others get really angry when you say you don't care, go ahead, unsub. People take that very personally. When one person says unsub, the rest of the people act like, oh, well, he's gonna change his mind, he's gonna be nicer, no. When you say you don't care when somebody unsubs, they act like you don't care about any of them, and that pisses them off. Damage controllers, um, refugee camp channels, corporate slave channels, these people are very vocal, and they don't like the truth, and when you speak out about the truth and they don't like it, their fan bases, their loyal legions of corporate cocksuckers, corporate cum guzzlers, they'll come at you. And these are the people that go out and say, oh, your channel is drama, oh, your channel is clickbait. These are the people that give a channel the stigma that's full of drama because they take fact and they take reality and they take what they don't like and they consider it drama. Why consistently watch people you don't support? That is one thing I've always wondered and asked myself too. A lot of people will continually watch my channel, watch your channel, I'm sure they watch other people's channels and yet they come to hate. Now people may call me a hypocrite but when I go to channels like Trey's or channels like Zaire's I go to interact in the comment section, I go to have fun. But people that don't genuinely go to a video to go there and be, have fun or be entertained by some other means I wonder why you keep going if you don't like the content. Oh, you're arrogant. Oh, you're an asshole. Oh, I hate you. Oh, you should die. Uh, okay, then why are you watching my content? Why am I watching other, other people's content that is stupid? Because I like to watch stupidity. I like to make fun of people. I like to gather ammunition to stockpile it so I can use it at another time. I like to post one comment in a video and see 30 people reply to me and then have fun and entertain myself. That's me. That may not be you. That may not be anybody else. But hey, that is me. And then you have the people that just use YouTube as a way to vent. A lot of people, they just hate their own lives. They're insecure, sad, pathetic souls. They come to YouTube to get away. Which is why I don't feel sorry for a lot of people on YouTube. They'll tell you that you're a loser. Then you go out and you go to a baseball game. You go to a football game. You go out and you have fun. You're at the beach. You're jet skiing. Skydiving. Now you're not a loser. You're a show off. But then you're broke. You don't have money. You're on welfare. You take a seven day vacation to the islands, you go to the Caribbean, you go to Megan's Bay, your uncle's the governor, you take black cars and motorcycles and police escorts to everywhere you go. You stay in a mansion, you're living it up, but now you're just trying to show off. <laughs> you game on 2560 Ti's which are much better than any next generation console. You're broke, you're on welfare. You can't afford to upgrade, even though these same people say that you have to upgrade every month to play on PC. 
So you go out and you upgrade and you buy a 970. And what do these people say now? Oh, you're cheap, you're broke, why didn't you buy a 980? You see, you really can't win. There are a group of people that are insecure, self-hating losers, social rejects as I call them, that hate their lives. And regardless of what happens outside of life, inside of YouTube, they are going to hate on everything regardless. And that is exactly why they go to channels and support channels that pat them on the head, pander to them, treat them like a child and all that because they need that extra positive in their lives. So to conclude that segment, most viewers are more or less emotionally fragile. They don't even make vids, they just come here as an escape. And it's crazy how any video response you make nowadays on YouTube is drama. See, I don't know if a lot of people know this or not, but before, YouTube actively encouraged users to make video responses. You could make your video, you could send it to somebody else, they would accept it, they would approve it, and bam, you have a video response. I would make a video, person A, B, C, one, two, three, make a video talking about the subject, they would link it up, people could watch my video, they could watch the response, they could watch the response, the response, back and forth, and you could have good, healthy discussions and debates. You do that now and it's drama. You can't do that anymore. People's fan bases are too loyal, too rambunctious, too devoted, too zealot-like in nature. It just doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. People are sensitive, like Rev said, and if you hurt them, they'll want to hurt you. But to end this video, this is the best analogy that I can give. So if you've lasted 20 minutes into this video, here's what I'll tell you. It's the cold hard truth, and maybe a lot of you don't want to hear it or understand it. But YouTube is a lot like wrestling. As good as Phil Brooks was, as good as he was in the ring, as good as he was on the mic, as much as he proclaimed himself to be the best in the world, the masses want John Cena. They want John Cena. They want headbands. They want hats. They want Make-A-Wish Foundation. They want all those things that John Cena is. As much as people boo him and hate him, John Cena is what the masses want. Not a CM Punk.